Confucians use writing to break the law, while knights use martial arts to break the ban. Xiao Luo traveled to the world of comprehensive martial arts and became the eighth prince of the Northern Calendar. He was despised by Emperor Ming and was only allowed to study, not to practice martial arts. Fortunately, the awakening of the cultural, political, and martial arts system allows for rewards as long as one reads. Congratulations to the host, reading Confucian classics and gaining a million martial arts foundation. Congratulations to the host, reading the legalist classics and obtaining the Mayfly Emperor Sword. Congratulations to the host, reading Taoist classics and achieving the Immortal Changchun Merit. Dot. Congratulations to the host, reading Buddhist scriptures and obtaining the meaning of the Great Bright Sword. Dot. Two ears are deaf to things outside the window, one mind is only reading books about immortals. At the age of 18, Xiao Luo emerged from the sky and went straight to the Tong Tian Pavilion, defeating the Sword Immortal with three moves. Conquering the Tang Clan, destroying the Blood List, disbanding the Demon Cult, the Swordsmanship points out, causing the warriors to lose heart and return to the world. Xiao Luo reconstructed the World Order of Comprehensive Martial Arts, established the highest martial arts path above the dynasty, stood firm in his heart and established a peaceful future for 10,000 years. Reading is to reason. Practicing martial arts is to make people around the world listen to me and reason well. Keywords of the novel. Comprehensive martial arts. Becoming a saint through reading, no pop-ups for violating prohibitions with martial arts, comprehensive martial arts. Becoming a saint through reading, violating prohibitions with martial arts, complete collection download txt, comprehensive martial arts. Becoming a saint through reading, violating prohibitions with martial arts latest chapter reading. Chapter 1. Young Readers. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 1 Young Readers Northern Calendar, Snow Cloud City In a remote courtyard with three entrances, the spring scenery is bright and beautiful, floating like snow. Under the pear blossom tree, sat a scholar in a blue shirt and a young man in a white robe, sharing tea and discussing the Tao. Not far away, there is another middle-aged man in brown clothes, hunched over, cleaning up the fallen leaves and flying flowers in the yard. Luor, do you know what Confucian scholars mean by writing without law and xia by martial arts breaking the ban means? To report to my master, this phrase comes from Han Fizi. Five worms, which means that Confucianism uses literature to disrupt the rule of law, and knights use force to violate prohibitions. The monarch treats these two types of people with courtesy, which is the reason for the chaos of the country. So what do you think? Han Zi later said. Those who leave the law are guilty, and the gentlemen take it with literature, those who break the ban are punished, and the heroes are raised with private swords. Therefore, what the law is not about is taken by the ruler, what the officials take is also raised by the higher authorities. The interests of monarchs and subjects are always different. If one day you sit on the throne of the northern calendar, will you stand from the perspective of the monarch or the people? The blue-clad scholar Xia Xian stared at the young man with bright eyes. Xiao Luo smiled innocently and said, Master, please don't make fun of me. I, the eighth prince who was despised by my father, have no chance of sitting on the throne. The righteousness of the emperor and his subjects is not a concern for Xiao Luo. Luo, you. You have self-awareness, that's great. However, Taishu Gong wrote in his book, Biographies of the Wandering Heroes. In ancient times, although the actions of the wandering heroes were not in line with justice, their words must be believed, their actions must be fruitful, their promises must be sincere, they do not love their bodies, and they will go to the hardships of the scholars. Do you want to be a ranger? Xiao Luo's face turns sunny and cloudy, father has deprived me of the right to practice martial arts. Xia Xian also sighed. The master and disciple silently watched the falling flowers in the courtyard. Fifteen years ago, Prince Xiao Luo of the Northern Calendar had difficulty giving birth, resulting in the death of his mother and giving birth to a stillborn baby. 
Unexpectedly, Xiao Luo was traveling through another world, and the stillborn was resurrected. The heavenly way was ominous, causing panic and unease both inside and outside the palace. Under the dissuasion of the national teacher, Emperor Ming did not execute the baby and threw him to the cold palace, allowing him to live and die on his own. At the age of five, Xiao Luo participated in the mid-autumn festival family banquet of the Xiao royal family for the first time. The princes and daughters all performed in performances, either playing qin, chess, poetry and painting, or dancing swords and archery. However, Xiao Luo, who knew nothing, memorized a few lines from Su Shi's When Will the Bright Moon Come? The moon has its ups and downs, and people have their joys and sorrows. This is a difficult thing to do in ancient times. I hope that people will last for a long time and share the beauty of the moon for thousands of miles. A poem came out immediately, stunning and stunning, making the entire royal family applaud and cheer. Emperor Ming was so angry that he dropped his wine glass on the spot and pointed at Xiao Luo, cursing angrily, you love to write poetry so much. In the future, you will become an ordinary scholar, not allowed to practice martial arts, and not allowed to turn purple. A few days later, the Confucian sword immortal Xie Xian arrived at Tianzi City and took Xiao Luo away from the cold palace. The past is unbearable. In a blink of an eye, Xiao Luo was fifteen years old. Master, it turns out that when people despise you, everything you do is wrong, and living is always a mistake. Xie Xian brushed his sleeve and robe, then laughed up and said, Ha ha ha, what's wrong with a scholar? Throughout history, which sage has not been a scholar? But. Xiao Luo sighed again, this is a world of comprehensive martial arts. This world relies solely on strength, without right or wrong, only interests, not martial virtues. He, who has no martial arts skills at all, can only live in seclusion in this small courtyard. Apart from studying, he also studies. Even though he knew that his master Xia Xian was a famous Confucian sword immortal, he dared not ask his master to teach him martial arts. The Ming Emperor's eyeliner are all over the northern calendar. No matter how strong the snow cloud city is, it is not as powerful as the imperial power. He doesn't want to cause trouble for himself and his master. Luor, master is leaving again. Remember to eat and put on clothes. Spring nights can be warm and chilly, so don't freeze your body. Xie Xian has his own things to do, and as Xiao Luo gradually grew up, Xie Xian's visits to Xuyan City also decreased. Master, take care. Xie Xian touched Xiao Luo's head and leaped, instantly reaching a hundred miles away. With the departure of the Confucian sword immortal, the small courtyard returned to desolation. Xiao Luo once again picked up the legend of the wanderer. The chivalry of ancient cloth clothing is well dot known and well dot known. Even like the chivalry of Lu Lane, who cultivates and upholds fame, and is renowned throughout the world, it is hard to hear that none of them are considered virtuous. However, Confucianism and Moism have both rejected it. Before the Qin dynasty, the chivalry of ordinary men has disappeared, and I deeply hate it. Xiao Luo patted the table and said, what the grand historian said is absolutely true. The ancient rangers and the current masters, although there are millions of people, I will go there. Just then, there was a ding sound. Ding. Congratulations to the host for understanding historical records and successfully awakening the cultural, political, and martial arts system. Dot. At this moment, Xiao Luo didn't know whether to be happy or helpless. It's been fifteen years. At first, I was still thinking about the system, but nothing happened. I had to resort to the wisdom of an adult and sacrifice my life in the deep courtyard of the harem. After leaving the apocalypse, I have faced countless crises and murderous intentions. If it weren't for the full protection of the Confucian sword immortal, the wild grass on my grave would have grown into a big tree. Finally, the Confucian sword immortal took Xiao Luo to the snow cloud city to live a peaceful life. Thinking about the bitterness of the past, Xiao Luo was filled with emotions. 
There is light at the end of the tunnel. He secretly begged the system to give strength and not live up to the hardships of these years. Ding. Cultural and Martial Arts System. Read designated classics and receive martial arts rewards. Just reading. This courtyard is short of everything, except for classics, and his master is the first person in the world to study. Xiao Luo couldn't believe it, he explored the system and quickly understood its operating principle. To complete the task, it is not only necessary to read the designated classics of the system, but also to deeply understand and form one's own viewpoint. Read thousands of books, travel thousands of miles, understand the people of the world, have a clear understanding of oneself, and prove the great way. Looking at the row of golden characters prompted by the system, Xiao Luo understood that the system aimed to cultivate him in the realm of culture, governance, and martial arts. Ha! The aspiration should be lofty, even if I am alone, I must walk on. After he finished exploring, there was another, ding, sound. Congratulations to the host, the newbie gift package has been received. Congratulations to the host for obtaining the stone-breaking sky shock mixed yuan palm, pulse slaying and marrow washing pill, and 100,000 martial arts foundation a pill, a scroll of ancient scrolls, a rich gas, emitting a soft mist, quietly floating in my mind. It seems pretty good. He first received the pulse cutting and marrow washing pill, which, out of his understanding of the world of comprehensive martial arts, must be a miraculous medicine for transforming his physique. Sure enough. The pill entered his body and the intense pain immediately hit, making him unable to resist a cold snort. The whole body's flesh and blood, roots and bones, muscles and veins are all disrupted, broken and reassembled. Wash the marrow and tendons, just like Ling Chi. Xiao Luo gritted his teeth and endured the entire process lasted for half an hour. After the renovation is completed. Xiao Luo felt all the impurities in his body being squeezed out, and his body shimmered with a jade-like luster. The ears and eyes are clear, the spiritual platform is clear, and it floats like flying. This spiritual pill transformed his body into a Wutsue scale dot free body, with both sensitivity and explosive power at their peak. End of this chapter Chapter 2 White Clothes Enter the Martial Arts Path You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio Chapter 2 White Clothes Enter the Martial Arts Path Next, The Stone Breaking Sky Shock Mixed Yuan Palm At the moment he clicked to claim it, the ancient scroll flashed by and his palm technique automatically entered spiritual consciousness. Suddenly, the powerful palm intent surged incessantly within the body. Hunyuan palm style. Shaking mountains and cracking stones. Hunyuan palm second move. Raging waves clash the shore. Hunyuan palm three moves. Thunder moves nine heavens. After several ups and downs in one move and three movements, the Palm Chi is hidden in the Ren and Du Meridians. Finally, there is the rich gas, which Xiao Luo clicks to claim. In an instant, Xiao Luo felt engulfed by the infinite vitality of heaven and earth. A hundred thousand martial arts foundations surged in, merging with all four limbs and bodies, and rushing towards the Dantian. The sea embraces all rivers, and the capacity is great. At this moment, his body has undergone pulse cutting and marrow washing, and his muscles and veins have become wide and infinite, fully absorbing an endless source of foundation. In this world, the realm of martial arts is divided into nine levels and four levels. Among the ninth grade, the ninth to seventh grade is the beginner's level, the sixth grade or above can be called a warrior, and reaching the third grade is a master. The four realms are further divided into the Diamond Realm, the Free Land Realm, the Leisure Heaven Realm, and the Divine Mysterious Realm. Vidra Fanjing is already a martial arts master and has the qualification to establish a sect. In a free environment, he is a rare powerhouse in the world. The Xiaoyao Heavenly Realm belongs to the existence of divine dragons that see the head but not the tail, with only a few dozen people in the entire northern calendar. As for the mysterious realm of divine wandering, 
it is said that only one overseas immortal has reached this realm in the world. Breaking through the realm requires a foundation in martial arts. The foundation of martial arts is the true element cultivated by those who practice martial arts. Zhen Yuan is released from the outside, capable of pushing mountains, shaking the sea, shattering the earth, and shocking the heavens. It can withstand the wind for thousands of miles, and wander aimlessly in the void. It can kill one person in ten steps, or break three thousand with one sword. Xiao Luo smiled coldly and said, Emperor Ming, you oppressed me with imperial power and betrayed me with indifference, but you can't count me as an accident in your life. A young scholar, stepping into the martial arts world with one foot. Spend one thousand foundations to break through the ninth level of martial arts. Spend two thousand foundations and break through the eighth level of martial arts. Spend five thousand foundations to break through the seventh level of martial arts. Spend ten thousand foundations to break through the sixth level of martial arts. Spend twenty thousand foundations to break through the fifth level of martial arts. Spend fifty thousand foundation to break through the fourth level of martial arts. Breaking through the sixth rank in a row, Xiao Luo instantly became a mid-level warrior. Immediately, the system refreshed Xiao Luo's character attribute panel. Host. Xiao Luo, age. 15, Realm. Martial Arts 4th Rank, Stamina. Wutsue Wudu, Mind Method. None, Move. Stone Breaking Sky Shock Mixed Yuan Palm, Weapon. None, Foundation. 10,000 slash 1000000, at the regular rate of breaking through the first grade in 10 years, ordinary people need at least 60 years of hard work to reach the fourth grade. The Peng rises in the wind one day, soaring up 90,000 miles. If the wind stops, it can still shake the clear waters. Xiao Luo's inner breath flowed, and pear blossoms rustled down. Spring light splashes. When his mind was calm, the system released the first task. Designated reading classics. The 13 classics of Confucianism. Term. One year. Basic Reward Million Martial Arts Foundation Random Rewards One of them, including mental techniques, moves, weapons, pills, etc. Million Martial Arts Foundation Breaking through the third level requires 100,000 yuan, the second level requires 200,000 yuan, the first level requires 500,000 yuan, and a million yuan foundation can directly break through the first level to become a true martial arts master. Going forward, there are four realms. Xiao Luo was overjoyed in his heart that the time to step into the four realms would not be too far away. However, completing system tasks is not an easy task. Although he has read the 13 classics of Confucianism, he still needs to integrate and integrate them in order to have unique insights. Picking up the wisdom of predecessors, the system will definitely not pass. The so dot called 13 Confucian classics refer to the Book of Changes, Shangshu, Book of Songs, Zhou Li, Ili, Li Ji, Chuanxiu Zhuan, Zhuan, Chuanxiu Gongyang Zhuan, Chuanxiu Guliang Zhuan, Luanyu, Xiao Jing, Arya, and Mencius. In addition, the Great Learning, the Doctrine of the Mean, the Analects, and Mencius, are also known as the Four Books of Confucianism. The Book of Songs, Book of Documents, Book of Rites, Book of Changes, and Spring and Autumn Annals are referred to as the Five Classics. These are the classics of Confucianism and Confucianism. Xiao Luo left the courtyard and walked into the study, silently flipping through the books. Half of the Analects govern the world. Starting from the remarks of Confucius, perhaps reading them again now has a different feeling. Night is quietly approaching, and the falling flowers are still there. A solitary lamp is lit in the courtyard, reflecting the stars and rivers in the sky. Spring has passed and winter has arrived. Just as Xiao Luo was engrossed in his studies, a snowy and dilapidated inn in the distant north welcomed a young man wearing a red single coat. Snow White Villa looks good, go in and have a bowl of noodles. The young man in red strides into the inn. 
The inn of Nuoda was surprisingly quiet, with only one customer sitting at the window, except for a person dressed in a thick fox fur. The young man in red didn't think much and shouted loudly, Waiter, I'll have a bowl of Yang Chun noodles. Just a bowl of noodles. Six copper plates. The shop assistant lazily welcomed him. Finally, a customer arrived, but he was a poor person. Here. The young man in red carefully counted out six copper coins and handed them to the shopkeeper. The boss sitting at the window pondering the future of the inn turned around and looked at the clothes on the young man's body. The material used for that red dress is phoenix fire, which is extremely precious. Even if it's Yuxiu Fang in Tianzi City, buying a horse would still be difficult. And the big burden he carried on his body must be a valuable item. The most important thing is that he looks like a fool and must be easy to deceive. I'm counting on him for this in. The boss happily watched the boy eat noodles. Suck up, suck up. The young man not only ate a bowl of Yang Chun noodles clean, but also finished drinking the soup. At this moment, a group of rough men walked into the inn again. Robbery. Hand over everything valuable. The boy who just placed the bowl was first surprised, then delighted. He strode onto the table and rushed to the robber, saying, Are you guys going to rob? Who are you? The robbers waved their ghost-headed knives in their hands, puzzled by the excitement of the young man. I, Lei Wujie, specialize in handling injustice in the world. What kind of Lei Wujie? Even an unknown person dares to pretend to be garlic in front of the master. The robbers were angry. In the martial arts world, one word disagrees, but fist and foot meet. The young man in red, who claimed to be Lei Wujie, fought against about ten robbers alone and was unable to distinguish between them. In the blink of an eye, the inn was already in disarray. Finally, there was a deafening roar and countless sparks exploded. Not good, it's Lei family castle in Jiangnan, the wind is blowing hard. With a command from the leader, the robbers panicked and retreated, leaving behind broken tables and chairs on the ground. Lei Wujie was proud and clasped his fists, saying with a smile, You don't need to thank me for my great kindness. Just remember my name, Lei Wujie from the Lei family. Goodbye. Is that all you have to do? The boss reached out to stop him. Hmm. Mayan was damaged by you. Please compensate me according to the price and bring me five hundred tails. Lei Wujie rubbed his head and said, I don't have money, but as long as I go to a place, I have money. Where is it? Snow Cloud City. Due to copyright reasons, the names of the characters have to be changed, and all the great generals are watching, end of this chapter. Chapter 3 The Thirteen Classics of Confucianism you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 3 The Thirteen Classics of Confucianism in the Fourth Month of the Human World, Fragrant Flowers Rest Xiao Luo pushed open the door of the study and after a year of hard work, he completed the system task. But now is not the time to claim rewards. Under the pear blossom tree, a middle-aged man in brown clothes is moving a table to cook tea. Today is the day when the Confucian sword immortal Xia Xian returns. Mute uncle, master is coming back soon. The middle dot aged man turned his face and saw crisscrossing scars in his eyes. He made a smiling expression, and the scars on his face were even more terrifying. Mute uncle was originally the assassin of the blood rank. Many years ago, he was ordered to hunt down the evil demon Xiao Luo, but was defeated by the Confucian sword immortal. Immediately killed and silenced by the blood list. At a critical moment, he was saved by the Confucian sword immortal. To cut off the pursuit of the blood list, he bit off his tongue, cut his face, and wandered the world with the Confucian sword immortal master and disciples. Over the years, I have taken care of Xiao Luo meticulously by buying groceries, cooking, sewing and washing. The Confucian Sword Immortal travels around the world, only coming back to stay for a few days every year. In the desolate time, it was the mute uncle who accompanied Xiao Luo to grow up. 
Xiao Luo sat down, rinsed the tea set with clean water, and waited for his master to return. The mute uncle pointed to the sky and gestured for the wind to blow. Uncle mute, although the wind is strong, I am not cold. Mute uncle ignored it and turned back to the room, taking out a cloak and putting it on for Xiao Luo. Xiao Luo obediently raised his chin and asked the mute uncle to tie the ribbon on his cloak. At this moment, a green shirt fluttered before my eyes. Xiao Luo stood up in surprise and said, Master. Luo, you've grown taller again. Xie Xian reached out to touch Xiao Luo's head like when he was young, but found that Xiao Luo was as tall as him. Master, you are dusty. Where have you been? Not seen in a year, the corners of the Confucian Sword Immortal's temple surprisingly have a few strands of frost white. Xie Xian took the purple bamboo shoots handed over by Xiao Luo and took a comfortable sip before saying. First, I went to Nanjiao. Later, I heard that Master Hanjiang had passed away at the Hanjiang Temple. We had several connections, so I rushed back to Gusu. Hanjiang Temple, forget the Master. Xiao Luo's heart was pounding. Master Zuiyu is said to be the first Zen practitioner of our time. Xie Xian nodded and said, After the Master's enthronement, there are no more successors of the Six Principles of Buddhism. It's a pity. Not necessarily, isn't he a talented little apprentice? Xie Xian looked at Xiao Luo in surprise and said, Luo, you don't leave your home and you know that there is no core. Xiao Luo remained calm and said, When I was in the cold palace, I once heard the palace maids privately discuss the past of Empress Xian. I see, Empress Xian. Lord One, she is also a pitiful person. She's pitiful. Xiao Luo felt relieved in his heart, letting the three strongest men in the world fall in love with him at the same time. Such a woman can only be called terrifying. Xie Xian continued. After the master forgot to sit down, he placed the heartless coffin in gold and transported it to Juchong Temple. Unexpectedly, the news was leaked, attracting countless people to compete. So master escorted us all the way. After Xiao Luo learned about Xia Xian and his old friend, he would definitely escort him to the end. I originally intended to escort Wu Xin to Juchong Temple, but halfway through, Wu Xin broke out of the coffin while pursuing him. Under the moonlight, in the killing shadows, an unparalleled demon monk slowly stood up from the coffin. Defeat Yu Ji with one move. Two moves to retreat from the underworld. Xie Xian recalled the moment when the heartless coffin broke out, and even he was shocked by the eerie scene. Wu Xian has mastered the 30.2 access control techniques of the Rakshasa Hall, with exceptional martial arts skills that do not require my escort. Moreover, he also has Tang Lian, the eldest disciple of the Snow Cloud City, Lei Men Lei Wujie, and... And who? Xiao Luo asked after him. Xie Xian took another sip of tea and said, There is also someone who doesn't know martial arts, Xiao Han, the owner of White Snow Villa. It's him. Xiao Han, the prince of Chang'an in the northern calendar, was the sixth prince favored by Emperor Ming. He is also his sixth prince. At the mid-autumn festival family banquet back then, they had seen each other from afar. That year, Xiao Han was thirteen years old and Xiao Luo was five years old. Soon, Xiao Luo left Tianzi and studied with Xie Xian. After four years, Xiao Han entered the Xiaoyao Heavenly Realm and was granted the title of Prince of Chang'an. Two more years later, Emperor Langya plotted rebellion, and Xiao Han pleaded for mercy on behalf of Langya, angering Emperor Ming. He was deposed as a commoner and expelled from Tianzi. Xie Xian must have appreciated Xiao Han very much. His tone just now was full of melancholy. Xiao Luo secretly thought to himself, if Emperor Ming is really angry, how could he keep the throne of the sixth prince for a long time? It's just a temporary punishment. It's not like himself. It's a demon that brings calamity to the world, and both father and uncle want to kill it. The inner sadness was not revealed on Xiao Luo's face. He also took a sip of his tea and smiled, if there's a chance, 
Luor would like to meet these young heroes. Xie Xian shook his head and said, they are all warriors. You are a scholar, and different ways do not conspire against each other. Master, you actually don't want the outside world to notice me, do you? Luor, living safely is better than anything else. So what about my future? With the protection of Xuyin City, I will die old in this small courtyard. Xiao Luo has always been sensible, indifferent, and independent. Xie Xian didn't expect him to ask this question. Luo, you have to wait. What are you waiting for? When your imperial brother ascends the throne and pardons Emperor Ming's punishment on you, and then uses your talent to assist the emperor, you will definitely be a famous minister in the future. Luo understands. Originally, the master made himself wait for the gift of the new emperor. But why? As brothers, one can only rely on the gift of another to live. Xie Xian did not detect Xiao Luo's inner turmoil. After chatting, he decided to take the exam for Xiao Luo's homework. What books have you read this year? The Thirteen Classics of Confucianism. Well, the beginning of Confucianism was the words of the sages, with their ancestors referring to Yao and Shun, and their constitutions, literature, and martial arts. This time, Xiao Luo did not answer, but asked in reverse, Master, in today's world, do you think there are still Ming Jun like Yao, Shun, King Wen of Zhou, and King Wu of Zhou? I have traveled to various countries as a teacher, and no emperor, such as Yao and Shun, has been found in the Northern Calendar, Northern Liang, Tang, or Song dynasties. There is no wise ruler in the world. Following the rule of wise rulers and following the rituals of sages is just empty talk. Luor, do you mean that only with a wise ruler can one live in peace? Xiao Luo calmly replied, Yes, only a ruler can serve his subjects, and only a father can have children. Speaking of father and son, Xie Xian felt a bit guilty. He avoided it and only talked about the ways of monarchy and subjects. If all the people in the Manchu dynasty were wise ministers and the world was a country of etiquette, why worry that the emperor is not a wise ruler? Moreover, wise people are ministers, and there is no lack of ambition in the north. Destiny is unpredictable, only virtue resides in it. The monarch is appointed by heaven and has a long and prosperous life. The master and apprentice had their first disagreement. Xiao Luo reiterated his viewpoint. The Book of Documents, Zhao Gao, states that there was a summer robe that was destined by heaven. By Dong Zhongshu's time, this person, in pursuit of his own ambition, deposed all schools of thought, revered Confucianism, established divine authority and a connection between heaven and man, and strengthened the sanctity of the monarch. Firstly, there was Dong Zhongshu's theory, and then there was the peak of the Han Wu dynasty. How can one say that he was driven by personal ambition? But master, have rulers of all dynasties really been given orders by heaven? End of this chapter Chapter 4 Breaking through the border and entering the first class You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Breaking through the border and entering the first class Xie Xian, who came from a scholarly background, is now the top scholar of Confucianism. He regards Confucian classics and previous sages as the standard, and is very displeased to hear Xiao Luo's disdain. Pai Xian is a civil and military figure, and the emperor detests Judah for his grandeur. I am worthy of the Zhou dynasty and have received the mandate of heaven. This is an inscription engraved on the Mao Gong Ding of the Zhou dynasty, which means that the monarch is the son of heaven, passed down from generation to generation, and cannot be violated. But master, since the Shang and Zhou dynasties, Every time a dynasty changes, it has been overthrown by force rather than abdication. Nowadays, in the world, ritual and music have collapsed. Although there are the three cardinals and five constants, the various countries are using force to confront each other, increasingly deviating from the path of sages. If master wants to achieve the great righteousness of the spring and autumn period, he should not use force to conquer the world, but rather promote moral and ritual governance. Xie Xian was shocked and said, Luor, what did you say? 
use force to conquer the world, and then implement the rule of sages. No way. Nowadays, there are dozens of great countries and hundreds of small countries. If we use force to conquer the world, the world will forever be plagued by war. Xiao Luo fell silent. There is no revolution that never dies. Master thought about the rule of Yao and Shun in his heart, but in his actions, he was always loyal to the emperor, as absurd as Emperor Ming's martial arts ban on Xiao Luo. He followed the rules and regulations for so many years. The sky is getting dark. The discussion between the master and disciple also came to an end. Perhaps sensing the rebelliousness deep within Xiao Luo's heart, Xia Xian felt slightly uneasy. He hesitated for a moment before finally saying, Wu Xin has safely returned to the demon sect. Xiao Han, Tang Lian, and Lei Wujie should have arrived at Xuyin City. Xiao Luo suddenly raised his head. After many years, are you going to see the sixth prince? Luo Er, the weather is warm now. You can go to Xuyin City for a walk, maybe you will meet these few people. Are you not worried about me being recognized? Snow Cloud City is very safe. Besides, you were only five years old when you appeared in Tianzi, and now your appearance has greatly changed. No one will recognize you again. Xiao Luo smiled happily and said, Then I'll have Uncle Mute accompany me and go out to see the flowers tomorrow. He he, Luo er has now grown into a handsome young man, be careful not to be taken away by the women in Xuyin City. In Xuyin City, there are many women who have reached the top three grades. Master made fun of Luo er. This time, Xia Xian only stayed overnight. The next morning, Xiao Luo went to greet his master, but there were no more people in the room. Coming like flowing water, passing like wind. The mute uncle saw Xiao Luo's lonely appearance and pulled him out. A bowl of steaming shepherd's purse wonton was already on the desk. Mute uncle, thank you. After I finish reading this book, we'll go out and see the flowers. Mute uncle nodded and withdrew, closing the door to Xiao Luo's study. The Confucian sword immortal is not here, you can now submit the task. Xiao Luo took a deep breath and opened the system in his mind. Ding! Congratulations to the host for comprehending the thirteen classics of Confucianism. Will the host overthrow the divine mandate of monarchy and rebuild the spring and autumn rituals? What I want to rebuild is rules, not etiquette. Once this task is completed, rewards will be distributed. Basic Reward Million Martial Arts Foundation Random Reward Phoenix Feather Qingxin Shirt can exempt all water, fire, electricity, ice, and poison damage in the mysterious realm of divine wandering. The random reward turned out to be a armor that exempts magic damage. Xiao Luo gave a smile. There are not many martial artists who wander in the virtual realm. With this shirt, Xiao Luo can challenge stronger opponents. Click to claim. In an instant, my whole body cooled down, and a silky sensation came through. Xiao Lola opened her inner garment and found that there were no extra clothes on her whole body. It turned out that the phoenix feather clear heart shirt had transformed into a breath that had melted into her skin and flesh. Only a faint phoenix line is visible on the chest. Next is to receive fixed rewards and a million martial arts foundation. The vitality is like mountains and seas, filling every inch of the veins. Fortunately, Xiao Luo's physique has been transformed to accommodate the surging million foundations. If he were an ordinary warrior, he would inevitably explode and die. Break through with the trend. Spend 100000 foundation to break through the third level of martial arts. Spend 200000 foundation to break through the second level of martial arts. Spend 500000 foundation to break through the first level of martial arts. Just here. Breaking through the fourth realm from the ninth level, even if it's just the diamond mortal realm, requires a martial arts foundation of up to a million. Xiao Luo felt both joy and regret. Refresh the character properties panel again. Host. 
Xiao Luo, age. 16, Realm. First Class Martial Arts, Stamina. Wutsue Wudu, Mind Method. None, Move. Stone Breaking Sky Shock Mixed Yuan Palm, Weapon. None, Ling Bao. Huang Ling Qingxin Shirt, Foundation. 250000-100000, next, the system released the next phase of the task, which is still reading. Designated Reading Classics. Legalist Classics. Term. One Year. Basic Reward. Million Martial Arts Foundation. Random Rewards. One of them, including mental techniques, moves, weapons, pills, etc. Unexpectedly, the second type of classics to be read is actually the works of legalism. As an activist, legalism has given birth to many powerful officials and officials, and its influence on history is no less than that of Confucianism. Legalism matured very late, but took shape very early. It can be traced back to the Xia and Shang dynasties when officials were in charge, and matured during the Warring States period. During the Spring and Autumn period and the Warring States period, it was also known as the study of criminal names. After being vigorously developed by Guan Zhong, Chi Qian, Zi Chan, Li Qian, Wu Qi, Shang Yang, Shen Dao, Shen Buhua, Lu Yi, Zhu Xian, and others, it became a school of thought. In the late Warring States period, Han Fei summarized and synthesized their theories, gathering the culmination of legalism. There are also countless legalist classics, including Guanzi, Shangju and Shu, Shenzi, Shenzi, Han Fizi, Xinxu, Zhengluan, Feilin, Zhengluan, Zhengluan, Guanzi Zhengluan, Shiyaoluan, Chenzi Yaoyan, Kai Situ Nanluan, and so on. It happens to be the 13 classics. Xiao Luo shut down the system and ate the bowl of cold wonton. Push the door and come out. With goals and pursuits in mind, the world at this moment is completely different from yesterday. Uncle Mute, let's go see the flowers. Mute Uncle was already ready, carrying a bracelet with fire and water inside. He gestured the sky, meaning to eat like this at noon. No need to carry food, let's go to the restaurant for dinner and drink alcohol. Xiao Luo took out a few silver ingots, which were red envelopes given by his master. They have been saved to this day, about ten tales. The four major scenic spots of Xuyin City. Shuaguan Wind, Yunling Flower, Sangshan Snow, and Irai Moon. At this time, the flowers are in full bloom, which is the last season for viewing flowers this year and also the season with the most visitors. Yunling is located in the western suburbs of Xuyin City, about 30 miles away. Xiao Luo never left the courtyard, so he naturally didn't know which direction Yunling should go, so he followed Uncle Ye and walked out of the city. Outside Xuyin City, there is a wide bluestone road that leads straight to the distance. The two of them walked for more than ten miles when suddenly they heard the jingling bell. Xiao Luo looked up and saw a thin and black donkey sitting opposite him, with a chubby boy sitting on top of it. Next to the boy, holding a donkey, was a delicate young man wearing a purple Taoist robe. Slowly, both sides brushed past each other. The boy on the donkey's back suddenly turned around and shouted to Xiao Luo, Brother, please stay for now. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Qingqing Mountain Taoist You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Qingqing Mountain Taoist Xiao Luo looked back curiously at little Peng Dun. The mute uncle beside him tightened his body, like a leopard encountering danger. The young man in the Taoist robe lifted the boy off the donkey and asked in confusion, Fei Xuan, what are you? The boy Fei Xuan walked up to Xiao Luo, circled around him, and then used his fingers like the wind to perform several deduction movements. Muttering to himself, strange, your destiny is too strange. Fei Xuan, what's going on? The young man in the Taoist robe was shocked when he saw the expression of the mute uncle, and quickly pulled open Fei Xian. He apologized to Xiao Luo and said, I'm sorry, but my young nephew still has a childlike heart and has disturbed your journey. 
Xiao Luo smiled and said, Zi Wei looks at Qi, Dao Yen searches for the dragon. I'm not in a hurry, why don't you ask little master to calculate a divination for me? Do you know us? Look at your clothes. You should be from Qingqing Mountain. Exactly, I'm Li Fan Jun. This is my nephew Fei Xian. Hearing Qingqing Mountain, Uncle Ye relaxed and his eyes were much softer. Qingqing Mountain is a famous place for cultivating Taoism, and has never been involved in the Jianghu disputes. There are three levels of qi seeking technique. Exploring qi, observing the mind, and searching for the dragon. You can't tell my destiny, it seems that little celestial master's qi seeking technique has only reached one level. Fei Xian pouted silently. Xiao Luo raised his head and caught a glimpse of an in not far away, carrying a flag of Ten Li Tea fragrance. Xiao Luo, this is Uncle Mute. Let's go over there and I'll treat the two heavenly masters to tea. Li Fan Shu scratched his head with embarrassment. There is only one heavenly master in Qingqing Mountain. Fei Xuan is lucky and has inherited the Taoism of his sect. I just follow the master to learn swordsmanship. The immeasurable sword technique of Qingqing Mountain is amazing, and Zhao Yuzhen's leader is the youngest leader since Qingqing Mountain was founded. He he, my master, he is a deity descending to the mortal world. When it comes to Zhao Yuzhen, Li Fanji's face is full of admiration, and his eyes are twinkling with the light of stars. Four people arrived ten miles with the fragrance of tea. Although this inn is located in the wilderness, it is situated on an important thoroughfare before entering the Snow Cloud City. It is well built and spacious, and its business is particularly prosperous. Running towards him, Xiao Luo asked, Is there a separate private room? Yes, yes, please, young master. The runner opened a private room, served tea, and then left. Fei Xian, please have some tea. Xiao Luo looked at Fei Xian with straight eyes, feeling secretly happy that this chubby little man was indeed dedicated to his job. Li Fan Yu became anxious and said, Fei Xian, if you can't figure it out, don't do it, to avoid getting into a demon. Inferring the heavenly way makes one susceptible to divine punishment. If it cannot be deduced, it is more likely to attract demons. No, I must calculate Xiao Luo's fate, this is also my chance. Fei Xian was seven years old and had already been personally taught the power of the great dragon elephant by Zhao Yuzhen. But the Taoist method is mysterious and requires meeting with sentient beings. Zhao Yuzhen allowed him to travel the world for three years and sent Li Fanzhong to protect him. Li Fanzhu cares about his master's past and insists on coming to Xuyin city first. Unexpectedly, he ran into Xiao Luo before entering the city. Just as he passed by, Fei Xian was startled to feel the strong purple aura on Xiao Luo's body. The purple aura of the human world is also the aura of the imperial dragon. Fei Xian took a sip of tea, made up his mind, and pulled out three old copper coins. The pattern of the copper coin is very strange. On one side is a snake-like figure of Enyuwa, with a kind and ghostly smile, while on the other side is a snake-like figure of Fushi, revealing twisted and terrifying muscles. His qi observation technique is less than three levels, so use hexagrams. Li Fanzhu was shocked and said, Fei Xian, this is the spring and autumn line used by the leaders of various dynasties, specifically used to calculate emperors, kings, and generals. How can you take it out? Zhao Yuzhen never used the spring and autumn line. Before going down the mountain this time, Zhao Yuzhen handed over the spring and autumn annals to Fei Xian and told him that the world is vast, and if there are people who cannot be calculated, it is his chance. Li Fanzhu swallowed his saliva and thought to himself, the young man in white in front of him, although he looks unparalleled in appearance and is about to catch up with his master, looks just a scholar no matter what. Is he the future grand preceptor? Fei Xian remained unmoved, with a solemn expression on his face, and drank softly. The three trigrams and six hexagrams know the fate of heaven. When spring and autumn decide the universe, open the hexagrams. Xiao Luo took the spring and autumn yao, 
closed his eyes slightly, and then casually threw it down. Three copper coins fell onto the table and spun incessantly. Except for Xiao Luo himself, three pairs of eyes were fixed on the rotation of the copper coin. After a long time, three copper coins were flipped over with a snap, all facing upwards with Fushi. At the beginning of the line, reaching the yang, then divining. Fei Xian's face was tense as he picked up the copper coin and handed it to Xiao Luo. Thank you. Xiao Luo threw it down again, and it dribbled and spun again. Copper coins overturned, or three-sided Fushi. Two lines, reaching yang, continue. Throw it again, the third hexagram, still reaching yang. The fourth hexagram is the highest yang. The fifth hexagram is the highest yang. There was still one last hexagram left, and Fei Xian's face was pale with sweat dripping down his forehead. I have never seen such a strange hexagram of the five yao to yang before. If the last hexagram is still to yang, then. Mute uncle couldn't help but make a hissing sound, he was nervous and even more worried. Li Fanju covered the copper coin and said, Forget it, Fei Xuan. Your Taoist skills are not yet mature, and Xiao Luo's heavenly way is not something you can pry into. Little Martial Uncle, if the last divination is not divined, the demons will destroy me in an instant, and the fate of Qingqing Mountain will disappear. Fei Xian took Li Fanjuan's hand and placed three copper coins in Xiao Luo's palm. Please throw, young master. Xiao Luo sighed, regardless of whether the last hexagram was yin or yang, Fei Xian would be hurt by this sneak peek at the heavenly way. Xiao Tianxi, Xiao Luo has implicated you, and we will definitely make up for it in the future. He threw a copper coin, and at the last moment, the three faces of Fushi were facing upwards. Fushi Fei Xian spewed out a mouthful of fresh blood, staining the spring in autumn lines red. The six trigrams reach the yang, sages emerge, the way of heaven is lost, and the world is full. As soon as these words were spoken, thunder struck from the sky, and dark clouds gathered rapidly. Heavy lightning struck the in one after another. Heaven is enraged. Even so, Fei Xian insisted on uttering the last hexagram. This hexagram governs the war of the world, the dragon fights in the wilderness, and its blood is dark yellow. Pop! A purple lightning pierced through the roof and hit Fei Xuan. At a critical moment, Xiao Luo leapt forward and hugged Fei Xian in his arms. Then came a series of dazzling lightning bolts. Ah! Mute uncle roared and waved his arms, wanting to stop the lightning. Xiao Luo! Fei Xuan! Li Fanjun exclaimed in terror. Instantly like ten thousand years. After the thunder and lightning, Xiao Luo's figure appeared. Surprisingly intact as before. Mute uncle pulled Xiao Luo over, caressing his face and limbs, and moaning incessantly. Mute uncle, I'm fine, I'm not injured. Fortunately, the power of lightning was completely reduced by the phoenix feather Qingxin shirt. Li Fanyu pulled Fei Xian over, and the chubby little one remained intact as before, with a dull expression on his face. He didn't know if he was scared by lightning or Xiao Luo. Sorry, I shouldn't have asked little master to tell fortune. Li Fanya wiped his eyes and gave a deep salute to Xiao Luo. Thank you, brother Xiao, for saving my life. Qingqing Mountain is unforgettable. I am the one who initiated this matter, and there is no need to thank you. Fei Xuan is injured. I will take him back to Qingqing Mountain to recuperate. Farewell now. See you again someday, please. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Yunling Flowers Like Snow. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 6 Yunling Flowers Like Snow. Li Fanyao took Fei Xuan on the donkey's back, led the reins, and turned back to Qingqing Mountain. Xiao Luo and Uncle Ye continued to go to Yunling. Ah, ah, the mute uncle gestured excitedly. Mute uncle, do you think I shouldn't block the sky thunder? Fei Xuan only attracted lightning strikes because of me. How can I refuse to save my life? 
Ah, ah. Mute uncle became even more excited. I know, I won't risk myself again in the future, don't worry. At that moment, Xiao Luo did not hesitate, let alone think of the phoenix feather Qingxin shirt. I just don't want to implicate others for my own reasons. The two of them walked faster and faster, and in the excitement of the mute uncle, he seemed to have not noticed that Xiao Luo had caught up with his pace. It's over ten miles away and will arrive in half an hour. Suddenly, a high mountain appeared in front of me, with towering peaks and clouds steaming around. There is a clear river winding for a hundred miles at the foot of the mountain. The willows are green and the river is level, and the singing on the river is heard on the mountain. On the way up the mountain, there are countless tourists. Snow Cloud City is not only the number one city in the world, but also a city of martial arts. Among the mountaineers at this moment, most of them wear swords and swords. People without weapons either have a calm footwork or strong arms, indicating their excellent martial arts skills. The woman watching the flowers also hung a long sword and curved sword, twisting her strong waist. The gentle and weak appearance of Xiao Luo's young man in white immediately caught the attention of most people, and even some women wanted to come and chat up. However, seeing the mute uncle beside him, the girls all stopped in their tracks. Xiao Luo didn't care. He came out purely to admire the flowers and had been locked up in the small courtyard for many years, which was really suffocating. Uncle Mute, look at this piece of Shifu begonia. The branches are lush with new green, while the little buds are hidden deep with a few red dots. Cherish your heart and do not spit it out lightly, and teach peaches and plums to stir up the spring breeze. Until now, the mute uncle's face relaxed and forgave Xiao Luo's act of saving people. Just as the two of them were looking at the flowers, a nearby noise rang out, mixed with the screams of a young girl. Get out of here, I'm a disciple of the Medicine King Valley. With the girl's scream, a frivolous voice came. Is there anyone else in the Medicine King Valley? It is said that Exion Bai Chao has just died, and there are only a few women left in the Medicine King Valley. Ha ha ha, little pharmacist, come back with our martial brothers. Tang sect kills people, and Medicine King Valley saves people. They are a perfect match. Another more lewd voice sounded. Senior brother said it well, it's a perfect match. Come with us now. It seems that both sides have opened up, and the girl's scream has turned into a cry. How dare you rob people in broad daylight? Help. Xiao Luo frowned, surprised that the Tang clan dared to commit crimes on the territory of Xuyin City. He walked towards where the sound came from. Mute Uncle quickly walked forward and shook his head at him. Mute Uncle, I'm just going to see the excitement. Xiao Luo took a few steps and saw a terrifying scene. A beautiful 17 or 18 year old girl, carrying a flower basket, was pushed and pushed by two middle dot aged men of the Zhangtu rat order. The man's hand touched the girl irregularly. The girl cried loudly, but unfortunately, although there were many people gathered around her, she was afraid of the power of the Tang sect and dared not approach. The Tang clan in central Sichuan dominated the martial arts world with hidden weapons, and was known as one of the four great aristocratic families in the martial arts world, along with the Lei family in Jiangnan, the Mei family in Lingnan, and the sword tomb in Mangshan. It has stood firm for hundreds of years. Most of the martial artists who come to admire the flowers are those below the fourth grade, and there are very few experts above the third grade. Moreover, the hidden weapons of the Tang clan were beyond defense, and several young men who wanted to take action were pulled back by those around them. On the field, only the pitiful cries of the young girl were heard. As the girl was about to be dragged away, Xiao Luo took a step and pulled away her dirty hands. Cold and indifferent, he said, Sikong Spear Immortal is a disciple of the Medicine King Valley. Are you tired of being wild in the Snow Cloud City? Two sleazy men have already succeeded and are secretly delighted in their hearts. Suddenly, someone stepped forward and angrily said, Mind your own business, you're the one who's tired of living. The affairs of the world are under the control of the people of the world. 
Let go of this girl immediately. Humph, you find death on your own and don't blame us for our hands being black. During the conversation, one of them flipped his palm up and a black bone-piercing nail burst out of the air, hitting Xiao Luohuan's jumping hole. This surprise attack was as fast as lightning, and Xiao Luo must have knelt down due to leg injuries. Unexpectedly, a long spear suddenly extended from the side, like a snake spitting out its core, striking the bone-piercing nail towards the deep valley. Who dares to be reckless in my snow-cloud city? The newcomer is a yellow-clad girl, snow-dot-white and delicate, with long legs and slender waist. Her appearance is three times better than that of a disciple from the Medicine King Valley. She held a black gold long spear, and Han Fong locked the Tang Sect disciple who fired the hidden weapon. Seeing this scene, the mute uncle quietly withdrew his true power from his palm and pulled Xiao Luo back a few steps. The older Tang Sect disciple suddenly panicked. He knew the girl in yellow clothes in front of him. Miss Sikong, yes, I'm sorry, we were wrong. Unfortunately, his junior brother came to Snow Cloud City for the first time and did not know the owner of the spear. Instead, he coveted the other person's beauty even more. Senior brother, don't think she's holding a gun, she's the daughter of a gun fairy. Why don't these two women fight together? After leaving Yunling, they headed straight for the steep mountains of Western Shu. They snatched people and entered the mountains, making it difficult for even the people of Shuian City to catch up. Junior brother, she is the daughter of Sikong Spear Immortal, and she is in the realm of Vitra. My senior brothers are the legitimate descendants of Tang Lao Yi. They usually dominate the Shu region and take advantage of any woman they like, whether it's Yuning who is unmarried or Luo Fu who has a husband. Today when I came to Yunling, I didn't mean well. The girl I happened to be interested in was the declining Medicine King Valley. Although they only reached third grade, the two of them were audacious and started to snatch people regardless of the public's attention. Surprisingly, she is the daughter of Sikong Spear Immortal, and Junior Brother is also panicked. Let go. Sikong Chenrua shook the tip of his spear, and the cold air forced towards their throats. Miss Sikong is easy to say. Tang Lian is your senior brother in Xueyan City and also a member of our Tang family. The two quickly let go of the disciples of the Medicine King Valley and began to make friends with a smile on their faces. Pooh! If senior brother knows you've done such a thing, he must first peel off your skin and get out of here. Under the pressure of Sikong Kian Ruowai, the two Tang men fled down the mountain in a panic. Looking at their backs, Xiao Luo's eyes flickered with a cold light and he whispered a few words to the mute uncle. Mute uncle understood and chased after the two of them. After watching the excitement, the onlookers dispersed in a flurry. The female disciple of the Medicine King Valley wiped away her tears and bowed to Xiao Luo, saying, Just now, young master spoke out with righteousness. Xiao Yu thanked me. Without waiting for Xiao Luo to reciprocate, he bowed to Sikong Chenrua and said, If it weren't for Miss Sikong, today. Thank you very much, Mississippi. Sikong Chenrua still felt angry and said, Tang sect and Shuayan city are allies. If we switch to other sects, I will definitely beat them up. Xiao Luowen said, This girl has been frightened. If Miss Sikong has nothing urgent, can you escort her down the mountain? Sure, come with me. You are a disciple of the Medicine King Valley, and I believe Daddy will be happy to see you. Sikong Qianrua readily agreed and looked at Xiao Luo curiously, I didn't expect you, a weak scholar, to dare to fight against injustice. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Lei Jiaoe Wujie You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 Lei Jiaoe Wujie, hee hee, I'm sure Miss Sikong will appear. Seriously. Sikong Qianrua's face was full of disbelief. Her charming and silly appearance made Xiao Luo chuckle inwardly. Three people walked down the mountain side by side. At the foot of the mountain, Sikong Qianrua whistled and her beloved horse Moyun ran over. What if there is only one horse? Take Miss Xiaoyu along, 
and I'll take a look at the scenery along the way. Okay. Sikong Chenrua jumped onto the horse's back and pulled Xiao Yu up. Hello, what's your name? Xiao Luo. Moyun's hooves flew like flying, and he quickly ran without a trace. Unexpectedly, the first time I went out, I met two disciples of Xiao Yuzhen, as well as Sikong Chinruo. If this is fate, then important figures have appeared one by one in the dark. Xiao Luo walked leisurely, feeling the gentle breeze of April and the fragrance of flowers in the wind. Soon, the mute uncle caught up with him. Are you sure you're dead? This question is really unnecessary. Mute Uncle comes from the bloodline list and was also a top-ranked assassin back then. Mute Uncle extended his finger and shook it, and with one move, the two of them. Killing a third-grade person in a free environment is really an injustice to Uncle Mute. Mute Uncle shook his head. If these two scumbags are not killed and go back to stir up trouble, it will inevitably lead to a rift in the relationship between Shuian City and Tang Men. Mute Uncle nodded again. I have been sheltered by Snow Cloud City for so many years, and it's only right to help them. In the future, when it comes to accounting, there will be connections. Ah. Mute Uncle raised a question this time. Huh, we'll talk about the future. Uncle Mute, let's speed up our pace and we can still catch lunch. Mute Uncle patted his wallet. No, let's go to the best restaurant in Shuin City. Is ten tails of silver enough to have a meal? Mute Uncle tugged at the scar on his face, revealing a painful expression. At this moment, in front of a towering attic in the city, people gathered. Everyone is looking up at this long-neglected Tongtian pavilion with their heads raised. The one who came to challenge is a young master in red, who has added ten layers in one breath. It's already the thirteenth floor now, I wonder if we can climb to the top. I bet he can't pass. The gatekeeper on the thirteenth floor is Luo Mingxian, the disciple of Elder Yin Qingxia. Not only is he good at martial arts, but he is also a ghost spirit. The person who revealed the information was full of gloating. He had climbed thirteen floors before, but was ambushed by Luo Mingxian. At this moment, the red-clothed young master Lei Wujie, who was being discussed by them, was competing with Luo Mingxian for internal strength. One is steaming red, while the other is shrouded in purple, and both sides are fighting fiercely. On the wall of the pavilion, two dice are embedded. One six o'clock, one one o'clock. Only the last dice remained, fixed in mid-air by the two players' internal strength, making it difficult to see the points clearly. The technique of burning with fire, sacrifice. Lei Wujie forced out the final true element, and his exhausted internal strength surged again. Boom! Luo Mingxian, with a pale face, retreated and sat on the floor. Lei Wujie snatched the dice in the air and shouted, Six. It is indeed six o'clock. Six, six, one, big, Lei Wujie wins. Please accept. Lei Wujie wiped his head with sweat. Luo Mingxian sighed and said, I'll be scolded by my master again tonight. Why is this? Because I caused her to lose face, if she loses face, she won't make me feel better. Lei Wujie stood still. Luo Mingxian chuckled and said, You're really interesting. Let's get to know you. I'm Luo Mingxian. I am Lei Wujie, Lei Wujie from the Lei family. Please ascend to the pavilion. Luo Mingxian gave way to the passage. At this moment, Shuayan City was filled with noise. Miss Sikong is back. Miss Sikong is back, run quickly. With the constant cries of surprise, a black horse galloped towards us. Sikong Chenrua jumped down from Moyun, ignoring Xiaoyu who was dizzy and disoriented, and took off his black gold spear, roaring. I've only been out of town for half a day, and I've covered people with thirteen layers. What a bunch of trash! Several disciples of Shuian City hurriedly ran over and said, Senior sister, today the fourteenth floor is where you guard the pavilion. Damn it! If Sikong Qian's long spear were to strike the ground, 
he would jump up with force and fly into the pavilion. Suddenly, a flower appeared in front of me, and a person in blue stood in front of me like a ghost. What person? Don't want to live anymore. The man in blue chuckled and said, Miss Sikong has a good memory. We have seen her before. Sikong Chenrua tilted his head and recalled for a moment, without remembering who the person in front of him was. He couldn't help but angrily say. A good dog doesn't block the way, quickly get out of the way. No way. I know now, you're helping that kid from Chuang Tong Tian Pavilion, you're cheating. The person in blue still smiled and said, the person in the pavilion is my friend. Sikong Chenrua was very angry, and with a flick of his spear, he stabbed at the person in front of him. Unexpectedly, the body technique of the person in blue is extremely eerie, dodging on the left and flashing on the right, floating as if flying. Half a cup of tea time had passed, and if Sikong Chenrua had not encountered the man in blue, she realized that this was a strategy to slow down. Unconsciously, he became restless and said, What kind of hero and hero are you hiding around? I don't have any martial arts skills, so I have to hide, otherwise Miss Sikong could kill me with just one shot. No martial arts skills. So who are you? Sikong Chenrua lowered her gun and looked up at the Tong Tian Pavilion. The intruders had already crossed the 14th floor and were engaged in fierce combat on the 15th floor. White Snow Villa, Xiao Han. I haven't heard of it before. I won't kill the unknown under the gun, and I'll let you go. Sikong Chenrua hung his long spear back beside the horse's head, flipped over and jumped onto the M.O. cloud, carrying Xiao Yu towards the Spear Immortal Mansion. Xiao Han looked at her beautiful figure that had disappeared from the dust, slightly lost in thought. Just as Sikong Qianrua was leaving, Xiao Luo and Mute Uncle walked into the Moon Watching Tower. The Tong Tian Pavilion, the Moon Watching Tower, and the Star Picking Platform are three tall buildings in Xuan City. To conquer the heavens and prove martial arts, to feast at the moon, to dance and music at the stars. They arrived relatively late and by the time they climbed the third floor, most of the diners had already checked out and left, leaving many seats vacant. Xiao Luo chose a table by the window and gazed far away, only to see a bustling crowd in front of the Tong Tian Pavilion. Second brother, what's going on? Is it possible that the young master is not a local? Someone has come to break into the Tong Tian Pavilion, and it has been built directly on the fifteenth floor, about to climb to the top of the pavilion, replied the courtier the Tong Tian Pavilion has fifteen floors straight up. They are here. After completing the fifteenth floor, is it considered as passing the level? Running excitedly, he said, after reaching the fifteenth level, you can challenge the three city lords of Snow Cloud City. I hope this person challenges Snow Cloud Sword Immortal. And why is that? The most famous move of the Snow Cloud Sword Immortal Li Hani is Moonlit Night and Morning Flowers. Once this move is used, the city is filled with flowers flying, and the beauty of the world is unparalleled. Young master, don't miss it. I see. Xiao Luo ordered a tender beef, a Qingjiang fish, a plate of fresh mushrooms, and also ordered a pot of Xuan wine. Second brother, is ten tails of silver enough? That's enough, that's enough. The total price is seven or three yuan. At this time, our store will give away two clear duties. Thank you very much. After ordering the dishes, Xiao Luo noticed that the mute uncle's eyes were straight, staring fixedly at the few silver nudes in Xiao Luo's hand. Seven tails of silver is enough for him to buy vegetables for a whole year. Mute uncle, if all the money is gone, it will come back. Luo Er can assure you that we will definitely have a lot of money in the future. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Brothers do not know each other. You are listening at novelfull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Deep Night Killing Intention. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 9 Deep night killing intention mute uncle ate the dishes on the plate clean and didn't even leave any soup. 
This is my first time drinking wine from Shuian City, and I never expected it to be like this. Running to clean up, he happily said, Young master, you have a good tolerance for alcohol. I don't have a good tolerance for alcohol, it's because your wine is too light. The two walked unsteadily home. The setting sun on the horizon is slanting, and the sparrows are tired and returning. Mute uncle, I'm going to study and won't go out again this year. Upon hearing these words, Uncle Mute felt relieved. He was afraid that Xiao Luo would be infatuated with the prosperity of the city. If this continued, the few famous paintings and scrolls hidden at home would all be pawned. Xiao Luo walked into the study and closed the door. Take out the Book of Lord Shang from the bookshelf. The Book of Shang Jun consists of 29 chapters, discussing the reform theory and specific measures implemented by Shang Yang in the state of Qin at that time, with the core idea of strengthening the country and weakening the people. Shang Yang believed that the strength of a country and the strength of its people were in opposition. Only by making the people obedient to the law, simple and honest, can the people not easily form a strong force to resist the country and the monarch, so that the country can be easily governed and the monarch's position can be firmly established. The Book of the Lord of Commerce advocates that human nature is inherently evil, and that governing a country with evil and good can make it strong. Xiao Luo's mouth showed a hint of mockery. Weak people originally, the source is here. The weak people are easy to manage, just like a flock of sheep on the grassland, requiring only a fierce shepherd dog. If the shepherd dog still can't control it, then send a wolf. It's best to eat a few adult rams. At the same time, the Book of the Lord of Shang advocates for heavier punishment and lighter rewards, believing that by increasing punishment and reducing rewards, the people will desperately compete for rewards. By increasing rewards and reducing punishment, the people will become passive in their work. In fact, the people are not competing for rewards, they are just afraid of punishment. The punishment is heavy, the people obey, and the world is peaceful. Xiao Luo flipped to the second chapter, Reclamation Order, and read it carefully. If there is no governance, the evil officials will not be able to benefit the people for personal gain. If the emotions of the officials are not intertwined, the farmers will have more days, if the evil officials are not able to benefit the people for personal gain, the farmers will not be defeated. If the farmers are not defeated but have more days, the grass will be cultivated. This paragraph describes the relationship between officials and farmers. If officials handle government affairs diligently every day, they will have no time to harass the people. People who are not harassed can focus on farming and reclamation. Although Xiao Luo came from a royal family background, he had never been familiar with the economic and land conditions of the Northern Calendar, and was not clear about the current customs of officials in the Northern Calendar. A thousand miles of fertile land, is rice and millet green. Are the people of the Four Realms worry-free in terms of food and clothing? Read the next paragraph again. Zi Su pays taxes, then the people are equal. If the people are equal, then they believe, if they believe, then they dare not be evil. If the people are equal, then they are cautious, if they are cautious, then it is difficult to change. Gradually, from the moon to midday, night enters midnight. A faint wind suddenly sounded outside the small courtyard, and three black shadows sneaked in. Next, there was a very low pressed sound. De Zhang and Xiao Zhang, when I lead the guards away, you two brothers can go in and find someone. Yes. Be careful, don't harm anyone, and retreat as soon as you uncover the details. The speaker was Lu Qinghe. He was ordered by Sikong Qingfeng to bring two spies who were weaving nets to search for Xiao Luo. Lu Qing River jumped into the small courtyard and slowly touched the backyard. Suddenly, with a stroke of his footsteps, he kicked a stone away. Quan Deng in the dark night, the sound of stones falling was exceptionally clear. Ha! A fierce palm wind hit his face, and a middle-dot-aged man, like an eagle pouncing on a rabbit, relentlessly attacked the Lu Qing River. Lu Qingha's figure flashed, avoiding the sharp palm from an incredible angle. The wind rises at the end of the green duckweed. 
Piaoping is a unique family tradition of Lu Qingha, and is said to be the second highest likeness skill in the world. A middle-aged man is naturally a mute uncle. His first move failed, and as he wiped it from his waist, a thread suddenly appeared between his palms. Tonight, the moonlight is exceptionally bright, reflecting the fish scales and cold light on the silk thread. Heavenly Scale Silk Lu Qingha's heart trembled slightly. He has served as the leader of the weaving network for many years and has a deep understanding of the world's experts and strange weapons. Among the weapons that interest him is this silk thread. The heavenly scaled silk, about two meters long, is said to be taken from the dragon tendons of a thousand-year-old dragon. It is said to be more sharp than a sword, with continuous cutting and non-igniting fire. Can be stabbed, twisted, whipped, or blocked. The owner of the silk thread was once one of the top ten assassins on the list. Didn't you die long ago? How could you have the heavenly scale silk? Luqing River rushes with the drifting duckweed, while dodging, never forget to inquire about this person's background. Mute uncle used to be a killer. Killer, only knows how to kill, not how to speak. The scales of the sky dance in the air, and the moves do not deviate from the key points of Luqing River. The two of them attacked and dodged, and in the blink of an eye, there were more than ten moves. Lu Qingha did not find a chance to take action. Before coming, Lu Qingha had already sensed that his opponent was difficult to deal with, but he didn't expect it to be so difficult. In the blink of an eye, his true essence raced through his body, carrying out the highest form of floating duckweed and tracing it for thousands of miles. In an instant, it has reached a hundred steps away. Mute Uncle didn't allow him to easily escape. A curved shadow was drawn by the heavenly scales and he chased after him. On the courtyard wall, the Zhang brothers holding their breath as they watched, took a soft breath. Brother, will Lu Shou be okay? No. Let's go, carry out our mission. The Zhang brothers lightly jumped over the high wall and slowly touched the backyard. Brother, look at that room with the lights on. Is the scholar still studying hard? Go and take a look. Sure enough, in the study, the candlelight was bright, reflecting the silhouette of a young man sitting upright. Up. Zhang let out a low shout and smashed the meteor hammer into the door. Boom. The door broke and the hammer hit Xiao Luo behind the desk. De Zhang has reached the first level of martial arts and can easily retract the meteor hammer in his hand. If the scholar really lacks martial arts skills, the iron chain tied to the meteor hammer will be pulled back at the last moment. At the same time, Xiao Zhang spread out the judge's pen with both hands and sprinted towards the scholar. Similarly, as long as the scholar does not resist, the judge's pen will never pierce the scholar's body. But Xiao Luo didn't know. The memory of being chased a long time ago reappears, and the shadow of death once again envelopes oneself. Hidden for ten years, only appearing for a day before being pursued again. What kind of world is this? Angry and filled with killing intent, Xiao Luo was moved. Wu Chui has an immaculate body, making his sense, judgment, speed, and strength all at the pinnacle of the human world. Xiao Luo tilted, kicked, and charged. Before the meteor hammer arrived, he rushed to the door and stood behind De Zhang and Xiao Zhang. Han Yuan Palm's second move. Raging waves clash the shore. The vast palm air beats like a raging tide, rolling up a thousand piles of snow. It's a thousand piles of blood. Ah ah. Two short screams, Big Zhang and Small Zhang's flesh and blood flew wildly, with their heads broken and bones cracked. Meteor Hammer, Judge's Pen, fell weakly to the ground. Only the eyes that didn't close in time showed fear and shock. Did you just die like this? Xiao Luo felt a bit dazed. He lifted his palm and looked at his fair and slender five fingers. How could this hand emit such tremendous power? Sure Petian Jing Hun Yuan Palm, with one move, kills two people. Killing, it turns out to be this feeling. 
Xiao Luo was not excited or panicked, he just silently watched the house filled with blood and limbs. This slaughter-like scene, no one can hide it from Uncle Mute. The secret of his martial arts skills cannot be hidden. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Cold Comes Under the Moon You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Cold Comes Under the Moon Ah Xiao Luo turned around and saw Uncle Mute standing at the door. The scarred face writhed incessantly, filled with shock, doubt, fear, and joy finally, there is relief. Mute Uncle, I'm sorry, I have already entered the martial arts world. Mute Uncle walked in and held Xiao Luo tightly in his arms, gently patting his back like he did when he was a child. The broad palm twitched and seemed to say, Don't be afraid, Uncle Mute is here. Xiao Luo tightly closed his eyes and swallowed the tears that rushed to the corner of his eyes. What about the bodies of these two people? Mute Uncle released Xiao Luo and took out a paper packet from the gourd at his waist. The paper bag contained some red powder. Mute Uncle flicked his fingers lightly and skillfully sprinkled the powder onto the wreckage on the ground. Soon, the debris turned into blood, and the blood boiled into foam. Only a pungent smell was left in the room. The mute uncle pointed to the inner room, indicating that Xiao Luo should go to bed first, and he should come and tidy up. Thank you very much, mute uncle. Compared to the cold-blooded and ruthless emperor in Tianzi City, Xiao Luo is more willing to call him mute uncle as his father. He returned to the bedroom, lifted the blanket and went to bed, but there was no drowsiness. The two bloody corpses kept swaying in front of me. What kind of people are they? Do you have parents, wives, and children? On whose orders did you come to kill me? Do people from Xuyin City know? Xiao Luo waved his hand to dispel the inexplicable emotions and forced himself to fall asleep. At the same time, Lu Qingha returned to the weaving headquarters. His plan to lure the tiger away from the mountain was seen through by the guards, and they did not chase him for long before returning to the courtyard. This is enough time for the Zhang brothers to complete the task. The headquarters of Weaving Network is located at the foot of Tsangshan Mountain, covering an area of 100 acres and is an extremely spacious location. Like a spider, there stands a solemn conference hall in the middle, and eight small lofts are connected to the outside. The eighth floor is responsible for Celebrity, influence, weapons, treasures, money and food, black market, privacy, and internal affairs. Through weaving a net, Xuayan City controls the dynamics of the northern calendar and the world. At dawn, Lu Qingha walked into the internal affairs building and said, Have the Zhang brothers returned? Report to Lu Xiu, the Zhang brothers went on a mission last night and have not yet returned to close the case. The person from the task building must come back to report and cancel the case, regardless of whether the task is completed or not. Only in this way can we take on the next task. Lu Qingha's heart sank as they had an accident. He rushed to the Spear Immortal Mansion, but Sikong, riding the wind, had already set off and led Xie Xiaoyu to the Medicine King Valley. Will the second lord take care of this matter when the third lord leaves without the lord? Lu Qing had dared not neglect and immediately returned to Tsangshan. At the top of Tsangshan Mountain, there is the Changfeng Pavilion. When I reach the summit, I gaze at the small mountains. This is the best scenic spot in Tsangshan and also a forbidden area that no one dares to step on. Snow Cloud Sword Immortal Li Hani is here to practice swordsmanship, neither humans nor birds can approach. Under the Changfeng Pavilion, Lu Qingha loudly requested, Second Lord, the task of weaving the net failed last night. We have important clues to report. It took a long time before a response came. Let's talk about it. The three city lords instructed us to test a person's background, and the details are as follows. His name is Xiao Luo. Yes, a sixteen-year-old boy. There was another moment of silence. Just as Lu Qingha thought the second lord had already left, Li Hani spoke up and said, I will personally go see him tonight. In person. See him. 
Lu Qingha once again felt a chill in his heart. Xiao Luo must be an important figure, so important that he would make the second city lord condescend to grace. I hope the Zhang brothers are still alive. At this moment, Xiao Luo was standing in the study, looking at the newly inserted Shifu begonia in the vase. On the pink petals, there is still the dew from last night. The study has been cleaned up to a clean and tidy place, with no signs of fighting visible, as if nothing had happened. Only the volume of Book of Lord Shang is missing, and Xiao Luo remembers that it was covered in blood. Then proceed to the next book. Han Fizi is written by the Korean Prince Han Fizi, consisting of 20 volumes and 55 chapters. Although Han Fei came from a royal family background, he enjoyed studying the study of torture and sorcery. He and his classmate Li Si sought to govern the state of Qin in Xuanzi, in order to save Korea. However, he was not the father's favorite son, and all political proposals were rejected by the King of Han. Even with the release of three bloody works, Lonely Anger, Five Worms, and Chua Nan, his current situation in Korea has not changed. Full of ambition to serve the country, leaving only sorrow and indignation. Xiao Luo covered up and breathed a long sigh. It turned out that the sages were also sons who could not be favored Han Fei did not extinguish the flame in his heart as a result, and he turned his gaze to the state of Qin. The first article of this book is, The First Encounter with Qin, which is a letter written by Han Fei to King Zhao of Qin. He expressed his ideals and urged King Zhao of Qin to unify the world. For this reason, Han Fei gambled his life. I am willing to die and see the great king, saying that it is the way to break the rule of the world. I have appointed Zhao and the fallen Han, and I am loyal to Jing and Wei, as well as Qi and Yen, in order to become a hegemonic king and uphold the principles of neighboring feudal lords. The great king sincerely listened to his words, one move will never break the world, Zhao will not take action, Han will not fall, Jing and Wei will not be loyal, Qi and Yen will not be loyal, the name of a hegemonic king will not be established, the neighboring lords will not be in court, the great king will execute his ministers to show favoritism to the country, thinking that the king's plan is disloyal. When the first sight of Qin was introduced to the state of Qin, King Zhao of Qin was overjoyed and said, I have seen this person traveling with me, and I will not hate death. A few years later, with the intervention of the Qin state, Han Fei finally managed to seize the opportunity to visit Qin. But King Zhao of Qin has died, and Ying Zheng succeeded to the throne. Han Fei not only failed to gain the trust of Ying Zheng, but was instead framed by Li Si and ultimately committed suicide in Qin State Prison. Xiao Luo reflected on Han Fizi's life and seemed to see his own future. In the Master's vision, Xiao Luo would be the best courtier, even the most famous scholar in the world, assisting the monarch in governing the country. Xiao Luo smiled. Master's wish was good, but unfortunately it's another peaceful night. The moonlight is like silver, casting a clear and unparalleled figure. Li Hani came by the moon. She flicked her jade fingers lightly, her sword intent fluttering in the air, surrounding the small courtyard into a vortex of swords. Xiao Luo, Li Hani is visiting. Please come out. Sword Immortal arrives, and Xiao Luo welcomes him from afar. Xiao Luo stopped the mute uncle and walked out slowly. Under the moon, Li Han wore a wide-sleeved skirt that seemed to blend in with the night. She was not masked, with a loose head of black hair, revealing a snow-dot-white face and starry eyes. Man is in the sword. She left, the moon was startled. She stopped, the flowers fell. Xiao Luo, the legendary evil world demon child actually looks like this. How about it? Like a yiksha, or like a fierce ghost. Pushi Li Hani actually smiled and answered seriously, just like an ordinary person, but she looks better than an ordinary person. Sorry to disappoint the snow cloud sword immortal. No, you're better than I imagined. Xiao Luo speculated that Li Hani should be the assassin from last night, and he admitted candidly, last night, I killed two people. Those two people are my spies weaving webs. Ah ah. 
mute uncle became anxious and rushed to Li Hani's body. He opened his hands and gestured that he had killed the person. End of this chapter